humility based on a teaching in the greatest life ever lived. Our scene is a great house in Jerusalem where the master has been invited to eat the Sabbath meal. As they wait for their guests to arrive, the men eye each other expectantly till one of them says, uh, <clears throat> Well, it's on everyone's mind. We might as well talk about it. What could you possibly mean, Caleb? The way you're all looking at the seat at the head of the table, I can see that you each feel entitled to it. Am I right, Samuel? Well, now that you've mentioned the subject yourself, it's possible that I feel I'm entitled to sit in the chief place. Oh, oh, but you see, Samuel, there are others who feel the right is theirs. And if you look around, you'll notice that there is no man here who is inferior to the others. And um, since I did the inviting, I might as well allow you all to share my little joke. I don't joke about my standing in the community. Soon the master will arrive. At any moment. We shall present this question to him. We'll let him settle the matter of who shall have the place of honor. What's the... Oh. Master, we bid you welcome to the Sabbath meal. And uh, you've come at a propitious time, for we have a great problem which has come up. None of us seems able to settle it. Master, which man here shall be entitled to the chief seat at the table? Yes, Master. Which one of us? Hmm. No answer? Is it because you can't decide, Master? The Master will answer you. Don't worry about that. We didn't address you, whoever you are. My name is Peter. I follow the master. I am here to see that no harm comes to him. Can it harm him to answer a single question? Master, I want an answer. Who is entitled to the place of honor? Will you answer, master? Whosoever exalteth himself shall be a base. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Ah, ha! Is that an answer? It's the master's answer. But if it's not clear to you, then perhaps you'll explain with a parable. When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest place. say, Nathan? Well, well. I didn't mean to interrupt you during the business day, Boaz, but I wanted to give you as much notice as possible. Well, it isn't every day a young man gets married, is it, Nathan? <laughs> no, <laughs> sir. And certainly not to any girl so lovely and fine as Ruth. Yes, and uh, you want me to attend? Yes, sir. Ruth's father, he said he would consider it a great honor if you, as my employer, would be there. Yeah, naturally. May I give him your answer this evening? Of course, of course. I should be delighted to attend, especially in view of the fact that I'm assured the place of honor. Assured the place of honor? Well, isn't that what you said, Nathan? What Ruth's father said? Or are you changing your mind? After all, as overseer of the greatest farm in this area, the honor should go to me. Shouldn't it? Well, sir, I, I don't know. Indeed. You see, I don't know what other plans have been made. I don't know who Benjamin has invited. How can I say the place of honor will be yours? I feel that I've been deceived, Nathan. Oh, but... First, you as much as promised me the place of honor, and now you seem to have changed your mind. You can understand that a man of my standing might feel he'd been insulted. You understand, Nathan, insulted. But, Boaz, all I said but was... But if you choose to insult me, Nathan, there's nothing I can do. So I don't have to attend your wedding, you know. Well, sir, I... Would you give me a chance to talk to Ruth's father about it? Of course, my boy. Talk it over. I'm sure you'll arrive at the right decision. Yes, sir. Ruth, 
Ruth, darling. The way Boaz talked, it was almost a threat. What do you mean, a threat? He's my employer. It might mean I'd lose my place on the farm. After how hard you worked for so long? Oh, no, Nathan. We might as well face it. Boaz is a vain man. Anyone who insults him is open to retaliation. In my case, well, it might mean my job. And now, of all times, when we're just beginning to build our lives together, it's important. The most important thing there is. Then there's only one thing to do. Talk to my father. Oh, I don't want to bother him with this. It'll spoil everything for him. You know how he's looked forward to this time. You'd better talk to him, Nathan. If there's going to be trouble, we might as well face it. Come, he's at his blacksmith shop now. You'll have to keep talking as I work. After all, I can't allow the iron to grow cold. <coughs> well, Nathan, Ruth? We've told you everything, Father. Boaz won't come to the wedding unless he's guaranteed the place of honor. Huh? <coughs> I'll be finished here in just a moment. <coughs> now to throw it into the cooling vat. <coughs> well, now. Here, Father, let me wipe your face. It's so wet, the sweat is running in streams. Thank you, dear. <laughs> when the Lord commanded that man would earn his bread by the sweat of his brow, he should have provided that blacksmiths would be the richest of men. For after all, who sweats more, eh? <laughs> oh, Benjamin, please. About Boaz. Boaz, yes. It's impossible, son. Impossible. There is at least one other man who comes before him. But, Father, Nathan's place on the farm, he may lose it. How would we live there now? Daughter, do you think that means nothing to me? I may be only a blacksmith, but I've got my pride. Your mother always wanted you to have a great wedding, to have all our friends there. It's going to be just as she would have arranged it herself if she were here. I know, Father, you did your best, but this... How could we ever expect that this would happen? Boaz. Ever since he's become overseer, he thinks he's better than anyone else. It wouldn't have been this way in Ezekiel's time. When he owned that farm, he supervised it himself. A fair man with no false pride. But when he died, he left the farm in Boaz's care so his own son could remain in Jerusalem to continue his studies. All that doesn't help us now. What can we do? You want me to insult my dearest friend? You mean Samson? A great scholar, a kindly man. Why, I couldn't even think of having my daughter married without having Samson there. I know you two have been friends a long time. A long time? All our lives. We grew up together in this very town. I always knew he'd grow up to be a scholar, and he did. One of the best. But he never forgot his friend Benjamin. <laughs> Yes, even now he invites me to his home, even when he has the most important guests. Should I insult him now at my own daughter's wedding by not offering him the place of honor that is due him? Your father's right, Ruth. Would I ask him to do this if it weren't so important to our future happiness? Ruth, I'm giving you the best I can. There'll be no final wedding in this town. But don't ask me to insult an old friend. Please don't ask me. You're right, sir. We shouldn't have troubled you about this thing. Father... Here, now, 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 I'm... I'm sorry, daughter, but... What you ask me to do, I can't. Believe me, I can't. Take her away, son. I... Well, I have work to do. Come, dear, please. All right, Nathan. Father, I don't blame you. Believe me, I don't. Come. Go, dear. Take my word for it. This won't seem so serious after a while. Ruth, please. 
Don't worry about it too much. But if you lose your position now, the money you're saving up to buy a place of our own, it'll disappear little by little until there's nothing left. You'd have been better off if you'd never met me. Oh, don't say that, darling. And as for all the things I've wanted, they've been for you. Everything. The land to assure you that you'd never go hungry. The house to give you comfort and security. And if everything had worked as I'd planned it, we'd have it all in only a few years. Well, what if it takes longer? We can wait. It isn't right. How can everything we planned on be upset by something so small and petty? It isn't right. Maybe I was wrong about Boaz. Maybe I misinterpreted what he said. Let's wait. Let's see what happens. Nathan, is that you, Nathan? Yes, Boaz. Well, you've come at a very opportune time, Nathan. Have I? Well, come, come. You, you won't deny that the thing uppermost in your mind is your wedding. Of course I won't. Well, I want you to know that I haven't been forgetful either. Look at me. Sir? Well, this cloak I'm trying on, it's new, just made for me and finished this very day. It's a nice-looking cloak, Boaz. Oh, that's all you can say. I go to the trouble and expense of having this made just to appear at your wedding feast, and you don't seem to appreciate it. For the wedding feast? Of course. After all, how would it look if the guest who occupies the honored place were dressed in accordance with his station? What's the matter with you, Nathan? You seem dull today. Boaz. Boaz, I guess it's my fault. I, I should have told you before. Told me what? About the wedding. I, I I don't understand you. You did tell me about the wedding. I've even had a new cloak made. What are you talking about? What you requested about the seat of honor. I request. You promised, you mean. Well, what about it? I spoke to Benjamin several days ago. He said... He said it couldn't be arranged. What? I talked to him. I asked him. But it would mean you would have to insult an old friend, Samson. Samson, eh? A useless man. They'd give him the place of honor over me. He's a scholar. The most famous in the history of our town. Such a man deserves honor. You understand? Understand? Of course I understand, Nathan. I understand that you invited me to your wedding. That you assured me that the place of honor would be mine at the feast. That on the strength of that promise, I went to the expense of having this fine cloak made. But now, now I find out that I can't depend on you. And if I can't trust a man, how can I have him working for me? You see, you, you placed me in a very embarrassing situation. Oh, please, Boaz, try to understand. I do understand. No, Boaz, you don't. Now you're contradicting me, too. What's the matter, Nathan? Why are you forcing me to do something I don't want to do? I assure you, I don't want to take your position from you. But, Boaz, I can't ask Benjamin to insult his old friend. But you can ask him to insult me. It wouldn't be an insult. Wouldn't it? Well, I'll decide that, Nathan. Oh, Boaz, please, can't you understand? I did the best I could. Now, when I need my job most, you're going to take it from me. Over such a small thing. A small thing? My honor? Well, I don't think so. And as for how much you need your position here, well, you can't need it very badly if you won't arrange this little matter. I'll see what can be done, Boaz. You see, Ruth, I wasn't mistaken. He came right out with it this time. Either he gets the place of honor, or I lose my job. Maybe if we talk to my father again. No, I wouldn't hurt your father. I know how he'd feel if he had to ask Samson to forego his place. But if he didn't... What do you mean? Suppose my father didn't have to ask Samson. How else could it be arranged? Leave that to me, Nate. Ruth, 
I can't tell you how flattered I am that such a lovely young girl could find time to visit a stodgy old man like myself. Please, Samson, it's something important. Well, what's more important than a wedding? Tell me that. <laughs> Why, well, I was there the day your father and mother were married. Now, ah, that was a wedding. But I'll, I'll let you in on a secret, my dear. I don't think your mother was quite as beautiful as you are. But we won't tell anyone that, uh, particularly not your father, eh? Oh, Samson. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. I, I shouldn't have mentioned your mother. I can understand how you'd miss her most of all now. I do. But what I came to see you about, it, it's a great favor, something you must understand. Nathan's employer, Boaz, he won't come to the wedding unless he's given the place of honor. And if he doesn't attend, Nathan will lose his job. Hmm. Young man with the added responsibilities of a wife needs his job more now than ever. No, we can't let that happen. But my father believes that you're entitled to the place of honor, and we all do. Me? Is that what your father's planning on? After all, his best friend, the most noted scholar in our town. Isn't it only fair? Would it help if I didn't go at all? You wouldn't refuse to attend the wedding feast. My father would never forgive himself if that happened. Then I'll be there. But as for occupying the seat of honor, well, that's a matter I think I can work out. What do you mean, Samson? We'll see that things work out satisfactorily. Oh, thank you, Samson. Samson, I... I just have to kiss you. Well, such a gift is indeed an honor. Now, don't worry, Ruth. I'm going to try and arrange everything for you. But no matter what happens, when I see you next, you'll be a bride. So what may happen tomorrow, don't worry about it today. Boaz will take his place as I want it, not as he wants. But, but Let's I... not discuss it now. There's something Nathan has to do now. Something I have to do, Benjamin? Yes, Nathan. It's a tradition in my family. You see, each groom in my family always went out just before the wedding feast to invite the first three strangers he met to celebrate with us. So, Nathan... Go out and find three strangers. Invite them to the feast. Carry out our family tradition. Of course, Benjamin. I'll go. And now, Ruth, we'll gather the guests at the table. Quiet, everyone. Quiet. My dear guests, I want to thank you all for coming to my daughter's wedding. You do me honor by sharing this happy occasion with me. But the lambs are brown and the roasting spits. The bread is hot from the oven. The cups are filled. So let us all gather round the table. <laughs> but before we take our places, the guest of honor must be seated. Samson? Benjamin, you do me honor far greater than I deserve. When I attended your wedding, I sat with the others further down the table. Let me sit there again today. Give the honor to another man. Give it to, well, to Boaz. To Boaz. Please, Benjamin. As a favor to me. But Samson, my best friend. Benjamin, if a man gives me a gift, must I accept it? Of course not. Well, then, honor is such a gift. It must never be sought. Once offered, it need not be accepted. For reasons of my own, I cannot accept now. Let me take my place at the tables with the others, as I did at your wedding so many years ago, remember? Please, for old time's sake, Benjamin, give the place to Boaz. 
Samson, I... Well, I think I understand. And it's like you to do this. Boaz, I invite you to take the place of honor at the head of the table. Why, thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. It's so <laughs> totally unexpected, but if you force the honor on me, I shall accept. I understand. And uh, now all the others, take your places around the table. <laughs> And now, as soon as the three strangers are here, we can begin the feast. Benjamin, Benjamin, I've done what you asked. Three strangers. Here they are. Thank you, Nathan. Welcome to my daughter's wedding feast. Take places at the table, please. And now that you've seated yourselves, let us know who you are so that you are no longer strangers. You, sir. I'm Simon of Gabea. Thank you for your hospitality, and I wish the new bride and her husband a long and happy life together. Thank you, Simon of Gabea. And now you, sir? My name is Jeremiah of Biro. May I add my best wishes to those of the others here? Thank you, Jeremiah of Biro. And you, stranger, you who seated yourself at the foot of the table. Your name? My name is Gideon. From where, friend? From Bethel. Gideon of Bethel, of our own town. We have no one here named... Wait. Gideon. Ezekiel's son was named Gideon. Yes, Benjamin, I am Ezekiel's son. I see you don't recognize me. Well, I can hardly blame you. It's been a long time since I left here to study in Jerusalem. But now I've returned. What good fortune to find a wedding feast in progress. But I'm taking too much of your time. Please carry on with the feast. Carry on? Not until you've taken your rightful place at the table. After all, the owner of the largest estate, heir of the most noted family here, come, come, you can't sit at the foot of the table. Come up here. Take the seat of honor. Me? Well, am I more worthy than the man who occupies it now? Indeed. He's only your overseer, Boaz. Is this Boaz? <laughs> the last time I saw him, he wasn't dressed so well in such fine clothes. Well, Boaz occupying the seat of honor. You have worked yourself up. Well, I... I after all, Gideon, it, it, it was offered me. I can see that, but... There's another man I see at the table whom I would have thought more suitable as guest of honor. Another man? Yes. When I was in Jerusalem, there was only one man in our entire town I heard spoken of with reverence and respect, even by the wisest men there. He is Samson. Uh, yes. Yes, Samson's fame as a scholar has spread far. I heard him quoted often in Jerusalem. I should think that he would deserve the place of honor. The choice is yours to make, Gideon. Then I insist. Samson, come up here. Take your rightful place. It isn't necessary, Gideon. Necessary? Has anyone said it was necessary? No, but it's fitting and proper. I couldn't occupy the seat of honor while a man like yourself sat in one of the lower seats. Please, Samson. If it will make you feel at ease. Boaz, get up. Get up, give the seat of honor to a man who's more deserving than either of us. Yes, but where shall I sit? To have the others move, have to make room. Disturb all the others just for one place. Why? Go on, Boaz. Take my place at the foot of the table. Take it. But, but after all, from the seat of honor to the very foot of the table... If you'd taken your right place at the table to begin with, you wouldn't have had to sit at the foot of the table. Go, Boaz. Now, Samson... Take the place of honor you deserve. I'll take your place. And we'll have a wedding feast as I remember them from my younger days here. Come, Samson. Everyone, rise and do honor to a man who deserves honor. <laughs> and now that everyone is in his rightful place, I wish to offer a gift to the newly married couple to two people who begin their married life 
with so hospitable a gesture as to invite strangers to share their feast. I shall give a portion of my land large enough to allow them to start a farm of their own. Farm of their own. Benjamin, Nathan, Ruth, we can really have a wedding feast now. Caleb, you've heard the master's parable. Does it answer your question? As to who shall sit in the place of honor? I think it does. As for me, I shall... I shall forego my right to the place. Samuel, you may have it. I? I shall take the place of honor? I won't contest your right to it. Ooh, but there are others here. Perhaps they feel they are entitled to it. We shall offer it to them. Who of you would sit in the chair of honor at this Sabbath meal? Caleb, it seems there is no one who would claim the honor. Then it seems that we have indeed learned the lesson the master sought to teach us. Am I right, Peter? Yes, Caleb. I think you've all learned the humility of which the master spoke. It is not the man who seeks honor who gets it, but the man who is humble and doesn't demand honor. He is the man to whom people accord it freely, and sincerely. Master, before we sit down to the Sabbath meal, tell us once more the words you spoke about humble men. Whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. 